we now start off with the flagship program that's offered by WIT, which is called okay. the Graduate Diploma in Engineering Highways. Yeah, um, sure. I've, I've kind of done some research. So we've done residence for people that have worked in design, construction, you know, of the roads and project yeah. management. They work as engineering positions, um, whole raft of positions. My, sure. There's lots and lots of questions. So this course is okay. in the skill shortage list. It's in the long term yeah. skill shortage list. So for people mm -hmm. that are listening and if you've got a bachelor's um, of engineering background from overseas and Carol will tell us what sort of engineering your spouse can actually come on a work visa because this is yeah. one of the very few level seven one year courses that allows for a spouse to get an open work visa. Carol, mm. can you just yeah. tell us what kind of students, because I know that your entry bar is quite high. You want to make sure that you get the right student that gets through. What yes. kind of students are you looking at getting into this course? Yeah. So first of all, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the program. So the New Zealand, um, New Zealand Institute of Highway Technology is the part of WIPT, the part of WIT that delivers the program. So the Graduate Diploma in Engineering Highways is fully accredited by our government um, institute. So we award the, the qualification, but we have a specialist part of WIT called the New Zealand Institute of Highway Technology. Now, I did, I have been talking about New Plymouth, but this program is also delivered in Hamilton. So we have um, a campus in Hamilton, just specializes in this particular program. Uh, this year, we were hoping to start delivering it in New Plymouth as well. But with COVID, that's been put back on hold until next year. So April 2021 is when we plan to deliver this program in New Plymouth, as well as in Hamilton. So um, we work very closely with the engineering or the roading engineering industry in New Zealand, with um, with uh, companies such as Fulton Hogan, Fletcher, Downer, Opus. So if you live in New Zealand, you'll be very aware of those companies because they're out on our roads. They're building the roads, they're repairing roads. And those are the kind of jobs that our graduates go into. So um, so it is has been very popular. Our students uh, have a very high success rate of, of gaining employment. Uh, some recent data told us that 85% of our graduates had jobs within about six months of graduating. So wow. it's a program that has worked really, really well for us. So from an immigration, again, sorry, just yeah, from sorry. an immigration perspective, for people to know that the course actually gives you a two-year open work visa because it's been delivered outside of Auckland. So instead of a one-year, which is done in Auckland, it actually gives you a two-year post-study work visa. So that's the first thing. And if you're able to secure a job in the first six months, or and that's what the stats um, Carol is sharing with us, that means that you can actually apply for your residence pretty much straight away because you will have enough points under the skill yeah. migrant category. As people know that residence applications are taking a very long time for processing. So I think all of that picture working backwards you know, makes mm. it proves that this is a really good place to start off from. So, Carol, thank you for telling us that. I just want to know now if we get into what kind of students, like what kind of engineering degrees for people do people need to have to get into the course? Okay, so our program regulations say that students should have an engineering background or science, um, geology, that kind of background. So the engineering um, backgrounds that we're looking for ideally are civil and mechanical. Um, so they certainly are the best profiles. We have taken some students from similar kind of backgrounds. So if you can prove that there is some um, relevance to, to um, structural engineering with infrastructure engineering would certainly be happy to look at that kind of um, application. Uh, the technical mathematics is quite um, high level so students do need to have um, good maths in their bachelor degree. So we that's what we would be looking for. We want students to be successful and students with that kind of profile we find um, have the best outcomes. So in um, terms of um, maths or grades, are you looking for a specific um, grade or are you looking for like a B plus or is there an average or is it case by case? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, I think as long as students have 
achieved maths in their in their bachelor degree and haven't had um, haven't had gaps or haven't had to to um, redo maths in those areas, then they should be fine. They should be fine. We do put extra support in for students should they need it, but um, as long as the students have achieved mathematics in their bachelor degree, um, I'm sure that they would they would be okay. Yeah. Okay. In terms of the course itself, how many mm -hmm. modules is that course actually made of? How many papers are they actually doing? And is there an internship component? How is the course actually delivered? Okay, uh, there's eight subjects within the within the program. So the students will be learning um, uh, subjects such as wearing surface technology, drainage design, pavement design, um, contract management, uh, some land surveying for engineers, traffic engineers, er, engineering. So those are the kind of subjects that the students will be be learning. So very focused on highways, on roading. Um, the kinds of jobs that our students go into, well, as I mentioned, those big construction companies, um, a lot of students go into jobs as technicians in those companies, as drafting engineers, uh, surveyors, um, working um, as, as even in um, quality assurance in those areas. Some students have gone into jobs in district councils because, as you know, the councils in New Zealand do a lot of road maintenance within their regions. So there's a number of different areas that students can, can go into. And certainly at the moment with COVID, um, uh, governments throughout the world are putting a lot of money into infrastructure development as a way of stimulating economies it's getting economies moving again so that people can um, have more employment so roading is one of those areas that has seen billions of dollars being poured into roading developments and new zealand is certainly um, doing that at the moment so yeah. some i've been i've been writing blogs on the infrastructure projects that the government's pouring money in since feb so you know we know that that's yeah. going to be the way to recovery and i think mm. one of the key messages that we've been telling people is that now is the time for international education to realign itself with where those skills are needed because that's exactly where migrants can and visa holders and international education can come in and supplement those skills that you can't normally find in new zealand um I Oh, yes, and I and I also feel, you know, when the borders open, um, because there's going to be such a lot of people wanting to come into New Zealand, the people with the skills that New Zealand needs are the ones who are going to come in first. So the engineers, the nurses, you know, I think those are really good areas to be looking yeah. at. Absolutely. Um, so just before we move away from the highway engineering, just two mm -hmm. quick questions. Um, what I was meaning to ask in my previous question is, so when people are actually doing these eight modules during the oh, course, yeah. um, yeah. are they placed with the industry? Is it um, is there an industry component in the actual delivery of the course or is it just once they're finished? Mm. This program doesn't actually have an industry placement. So what um, what often happens is, the students will go out and view different projects that are taking place, but there is actually no um, no no uh, internship or industry placement. So the students will will do their um, their surveying. So they'll they'll be practical. You know, there there will be some practical component when when they learn those kind of skills, but the program doesn't actually have an internship so there's just not time to embed that as well yeah, um, yeah. i think yeah, yeah yeah so that's i yeah. think just on the topic i mean we've got a live question here and i'll just put that here in front of you so this person's asking um for this specific program that if they actually don't have um the specific qualification or a science background but they do have experience um can that be considered at all um, there is an there is an avenue where students or where the program director can look at in, at experience. So if the experience was related to highway engineering, and you had a diploma in another area, or or you had um, a bachelor degree in another area, but had good maths, then yes, we would certainly look at it. I would have to see that application to to make a, a real decision, but um, we're, we're happy to, to have a look. 
no problem. Yeah. I think the key to remember here for people that are listening is that you if you want, if you try and get into this course with no real skills that you need to pass the course, then it's a setback for everybody involved. Um, mm -hmm. And you all want to, you know, all parties involved want to make sure that you, we don't set you up to fail because that's, yeah. that's you know, that's no, a loss for everybody. So it, it has mm -hmm. to be the right people because then they can see it through the end and that those skills are going to show in the workplace as well. So I think what I'm hearing from Carol is it is really mm -hmm. important to have those right skills and knowledge before you get yeah. into this course because it is just one year, pretty full on, and it really gears you up to the big wide world um, straight after this. Brilliant. Yep.